Hello owners and Michael Costa Racing fans, welcome to episode 27 of Michael Costa Racing TV. Not a lot's been going on the last couple of weeks, very quiet on the, on the runners front, still very busy in the stables, lots of babies coming in and just really looking towards, towards the future in the next 12 months ahead. But uh, all important work and continuing on with the foundation work that's so important of trying to promote and secure a horse's longevity in, in racing. But uh, well, let's get straight into the show, a few runners, a few up and coming runners and uh, a stock standard type of show. Okay, the fortnight that has been, we had it on the 30th of the 11th there, Sequinda and Divine Factor going to the mode. Uh, we're pretty pumped up about these two going there. They worked, uh, Sequinda in particular, worked very, very good on the Tuesday leading in. Uh, so we're bright-eyed and bushy-tailed, but unfortunately didn't pan out that way. Uh, Sequinda didn't let down. Divine Factor got bump from pillar to post and uh, pretty much got just eased out of it. Uh, subsequently, after the race, Divine Factor pulled up very tight uh, all over and Sequinda, we couldn't find what was wrong with her within the first 24 hours, but shortly after uh, we took a few bloods and then she went downhill 48 hours and came down with the virus. So we had to back off her completely. So pretty down after that, uh, we we'll, we'll pumped up, uh, weren't expecting a, a win. We never expect anything, but uh, it was just, uh, a perfect preparation and it just didn't pan out so took a little bit to get over normally we cop the wins pretty uh, and the defeats pretty sweet but uh, sometimes uh, you've just got to roll with the punches on the same day we had uh, firebox he ran well he settled back but ran home nicely just missed out straight off the post he was in front he just took a little bit of time to balance in the straight and I just think that was due to him having a, a long preparation and uh, also finding another wide gate. He's been a very unlucky horse in, uh, in finding wide gates. Uh, we then went to Grafton on the 1st of the 12th. We had moshed up. We weren't too sure about how she was going to handle the wet track, but it was, she, was a, she uh, really let down nicely once she, uh, once she balanced up in the straight. Another good win for Alan Chow, who's been a really great addition uh, to the stable, Mr. Chow. Okay, Sunshine Coast on the 6th of the 12th, we had Willow Tito. She started from Barrier 3. She got hand a little bit, ended up settling back, and then another one came back in the face and got posted three wide. Uh, she then got a, a, sort of over racing a little bit, and Brad Stewart went around in the field of her and uh, took off. Uh, not beating around the bush, she just she had no chance in the run. Uh, Brad Stewart came back in and, and said, threw his hands up and just said, look, I gave her no opportunity. A uh, little bit of victim of circumstances. I thought she didn't run too bad, uh, really. He eased up on her in the last sort of 50, 100. And for the run she had in transit, it was actually pretty good run and that was a, it was a hot day as well there so uh, we can rule the line through that one. Uh, we then went to the Gold Coast on the 7th of the 12th and we had Show Deck uh, having a first start for the stable. She was uh, first start over 1100, far too short for her. She's a big, big man but she probably ran up to where we thought she would, uh, ran a placing there and uh, ran with, yeah, where we thought she'd run. We didn't think she'd be winning but uh, thought she'd run okay. Uh, we then had Firebox backing up at the Sunny Coast the week after he had a he had a good week uh, so we decided to give him the opportunity to back up because it was the right race uh, we went into the race just knowing that we're probably at the, e the end of the prep and he just ran accordingly he just didn't have that uh, turn of foot so we've tipped him to to the paddock uh, we then had divine factor at the gold coast it was a strange race we had a lot of rain leading in but it, the track dried out she spat the bit at the 800 uh, struggled to travel and then in the last 50 she really hit the line strong and uh, and worked uh, to finish third so that was a bit of a strange one but she'll be going to the paddock also Okay, up and coming runners. We've got Cedar Power at the Gold Coast. He's had three trials. He's uh, really well in the coat, but he just, we've spoken about him a lot on the show that he just gives absolutely nothing in track work and no guide. He's a horse that wants further. So the 1400 meters, even though it's a small field, uh, they'll most likely be too sharp for him, but uh, he looks like he's in a good place off, off his trials, but he's gonna be a horse which is gonna re really appreciate further in a few runs time. Uh, we then head to Eagle Farm. We've got Malahide and Fobido in their class three it's actually a very uh very competitive class three but uh we're both we're lining both those horses up to try and peak the week before the magic millions for big races there on Tuesday's work, I'd say Malahide was much sharper than Fobida and uh, her work on, on uh, this week as well 
was uh, or also on Thursday was very very nice so I'd probably look to lean towards Malahide as an each way bet but she's got a bit of fitness improvement as well to peak for that second up run uh, and that's about it until next week next week we'll have third martini a new horse to the stable she's a maiden which uh, hasn't really set the world on fire but we're hoping to work some magic there uh, into miss me sequinda might uh, might run as well and moshed up also we went down Ballina Trials last week. We had Shishak Coco Fashion, Intermiss Me, Cedar Power, Malahide, and Vampirina Diamond Trial. Vampirina was in the, in the second trial there. But of the first trial, Shishak, he got bumped from pillar to post and pulled up with a bit of a bruise on one of his legs. So we're giving him a, a bit of a weak light work. Uh, Coco Fashion actually uh, wrenched her joint. So two out of there, which uh, got a few bumps, didn't come out of it too well. Intermiss Me, I thought, trialed really well because it was a pretty hot trial. Cedar power well uh, for him and Malahide was a pretty strong trial uh, we eased up on her over the line uh, so probably didn't look as visually good but the time was very strong uh, we then had in the second trial Vampirina Diamond uh, she was chasing down a good horse she, pretty nice trial for her she's a by declaration of war and a horse that's probably going to get over a little bit further in a couple of preparations but uh, if we can place her right she could be winning a maiden uh, pretty quickly if we uh, if we do place her right Okay, Woodford Reserve owner of the week fortnight is our good friend uh, down at uh, Western Sydney, Wayne Fenari. Wayne joined the stable at Warwick Farm and uh, just in a small share with a friend and then he ventured into ownership and we've put him into a few shares here and there and uh, he kicked off from one very small share jumping into his next horse which was Manea. He's also in Malahide, Fobida, uh, so he's had a really good run of success. There's been one or two slow ones in there as well which, uh, which hasn't worked out but overall we've had a really good relationship with Wayne. He hasn't really done anything, he's just a dead set top bloke and you can call him with good news or bad news and he knows that uh, we're doing our best here at the stable and trying to make the right decision for him and uh, in his horses and uh, he's going to win the owner of the week just for just for being a dead set good bloke and I think that's what all about all Christmas is about is uh, sharing it with good people and uh, that's why Wayne's winning the owner of the week. So a big bottle of Woodford Reserve is coming down to you Wayne and also the polos are on their way we've we've just about received them we've got the we've been told that they should be arriving in the post today or tomorrow so we'll be able to send them over shortly and we'll get something on the website also once they do arrive Okay, new arrival for the week is Money Shot. I really love this cult. He was a $55,000 yearling purchase from the Magic Millions uh, last year and I last year this year still almost last year, but uh, I really hope that we can find some horses of this quality next year for this price. He's got a good pedigree, uh, he's a lovely big horse and uh, jumped out last preparation and showed to be well, well above average. So all going well and uh, there's still a lot of water to go under the bridge for this boy, but all going well, I think uh, the owners will be uh, having a lot of fun with him. So fingers crossed we can purchase some more like him next year. Okay, this week I spent four days down in Scone. Yesterday I was about 45 degrees, we're absolutely melting. We viewed over about 500 yearlings, all for the Magic Millions. So we just wanted to get a bit of a head start. It was an amazing little tour. Uh, plenty of Ks under the belt and plenty of horses to see and also plenty of nice horses as well. So thank you for all the horses being so well behaved, the studs and the staff working in the heat. The hospitality is fantastic and it's just amazing these studs. They're just uh, great places to be. It gives my me goosebumps when when I walk in and we'll definitely look to try and get some more footage of some of these studs because they're just amazing places and I encourage everyone to to go out and see them if you if you get the opportunity but we've gotten a head start on the sales which is good so uh, really looking forward to getting to the sales in a, in a couple of weeks times at the Magic Millions a major major focus this year is to try and t uh, land as many two-year-old types as possible and try and buy as many as we can from the Magic Millions as we really want a lot of uh, uh, try and get as many early early runners next year due to just looking around at the fields at the moment these four and five two-year-old horse fields um, really want to target them for for next year so get in contact if you're if you're keen to jump on board we'll be uh, we'll be definitely active as possible at these sales 
Okay, track work of the week. We did, well, it was the same last episode, but we're gonna have to go with her again because uh, that's what's happening. Malahide, she worked extremely well this week. Just a nice, easy gallop after a trial from uh, the previous week. Ears are pricked, you can see her going over the line run by Alan Chow. Uh, times are very sharp, so she just looks like she's in a good position he heading into her first race with some fitness improvement to come. So she makes the track work of the week uh, a fortnight in a row. Tips from last episode, we had our crown mistress. Oh, hi. It's carol singers. I hope you enjoyed that little flashback from last year and uh, as you can see from the cards, Iron Dome was scratched and uh, we're, not, we're not training Winx, but we have had a good year. We've had the new addition and we've had plenty of new horse additions and new owners. So it's uh, fantastic to, for all of you new owners to join, join the family and for the continued support from all of our, our loyal owners. We couldn't do it without you. And also the horses, they're just, uh, they're the most remarkable creatures in the world and we, we love them uh, so much and uh, we just really hope that everyone has a lovely lovely christmas a safe christmas and that we can have a, a cracking 12 months next year and hopefully some group winners and plenty to talk about on the show merry christmas to everyone from the costa family and michael costa racing <laughs>